These day names aren't stored in a table, nor are they specified in a value list, because what is displayed depends on what language Windows is using. Hi, this is Crystal. I'm going to show you how to use a custom function to populate the rows of a control with a list. First, let's look at the regular ways that a list can get information. A combo box is a combination of a list and a text box. When you type into the control, you are using the text box part. When you drop a list, you're using the list box part. So everything we cover about the list of a list box applies to the list part of a combo box too. And what we discuss about the list part of a combo box also applies to a list box. Here is a combo box to choose a month number. It defaults to the current month number and is changed either by changing the date for the calendar or by specifically changing it, which then changes the calendar date too. Let's look at its properties. Its row source type is value list. The row source is a list of numbers from 1 to 12. The list in this control chooses the year starting with last year, whatever that is, to 20 years in the future. The row source type is table query. Its row source is an SQL statement depending on a table of numbers. Limit to list is no, so you can type any year that you want. On the Events tab of the Property Sheet, the behavior of both is the same. On Got Focus and Mouse Up, the list is automatically dropped. The list is automatically dropped by a function that drops the list of the active control. Both controls have the same after update event as well. This function reads code from the value just sent and changes the value for the calendar date. Now, let's see how the list is populated for the first day of the week list box. Days of the week are shown depending on what language is set in Windows. The language display doesn't matter because what access is storing is the number. Several functions have the first day of the week as an optional parameter, such as the format function, the weekday name function, and the weekday function. The first application I saw that set row source type to a function is the file property viewer for access, which shows detailed information provided by the Windows operating system. You can download the file property viewer yourself from everythingaccess.com. I'll put a link in the video description. With this tool, you can browse to any file and examine its properties. This screenshot shows the properties for a JPEG file. I modified Wayne's form a little bit. The text box with file and path is bigger. The list box with results is wider so that the property columns can be wider. I love this tool so much that I pinned it to my access task. To use it with a more recent version of access, I converted the MDB to an ACCDB. With an ACCDB, the list box can be anchored so that it stretches taller or shrinks shorter when the window is resized. This tool was written by Wayne Phillips. I learn a lot by looking at his code. It's absolutely brilliant. Now let's get back to the calendar maker. The first day of the week currently shows values in English, but changes if the Windows language is something else. Because it automatically runs, whenever region settings are changed in Windows, nothing needs to be done to trigger it. If I change the language to French, Access immediately shows the new settings. Now I'll go back to English. 
The first column is the day of the week number, and the second column shows the day name. Let's see how this is done. In the row source type of the first day list box control, a custom function is specified. It is not intuitive that you can do this, because when you drop the list of choices, there is no event procedure option or anything to indicate that you can put something else there. I discovered the ability to specifically set something else here by seeing what Wayne Phillips did in his file property viewer. The GetMyDayNames function populates a list of day numbers and names depending on the language Windows is using. It is defined in the code behind the form and is a callback function. It will be called several times as access needs information to fill the control with data. It has five parameters in a specific order, and the names of the parameters don't matter. Each time it's called, VBA sets the value that Access is looking for. In a custom function for row source type, the first parameter is the control with this function specified in its row source type. Here it is called pControl. While it isn't used in this code, it could be if this code was used for more than one control, or we needed to find something else out about it. I like to start parameter names with little p to indicate they are past parameters. We all have our ways of doing things, so we can remember what we're doing. The second parameter is pvid. This is a unique value assigned by code. Third is the row number being processed, pn row number. Fourth is the column number being processed, pn call number. Fifth is an integer representing the type of information that Access is requesting, called pi code. To determine what to do, select case is used to test PI code for the type of information to return. These cases are listed in the order they're executed, except the case to get value for a column and row is first, since it's done the most. This list has two columns. The first column is the day number, where Sunday is 1, Monday is 2, to 7 for Saturday. Because column indexes start with 0, 1 is added, so the first value will be 1. The second column is the name of the day. The weekday function returns a string indicating the specified day of the week. The first parameter is the weekday number. The second parameter is true or false, if you want it abbreviated or not and the third parameter is the number for the first day of the week. VB Sunday is a Visual Basic constant for Sunday, so it is 1. The next case is to initialize the function, which is the first case that is actually evaluated. If this function can populate the list, it is set to anything except 0 or false. Next will be a case to assign a unique identifier. The timer function is used to return a single precision number with decimal places for the number of seconds with a fractional part that have elapsed since midnight. Alternatively, instead of 1 to open, 2 can be used to prepare for an external dependency such as a query. There's no constant that I found for this since it's not as implemented according to Shane Groff, a member of the Access team at Microsoft. He added to be careful if used. Because the number of columns and the column widths are specified on the property sheet for this control, there's no need to set them, so these cases are skipped. Next is the number of rows. A week has seven days, so the return value is set to seven. Then comes three more cases, that are also skipped. A format string can be set for the row and column of data, but it isn't needed here. Apparently the case for close is provisioned, but not used. The case for end would be used if something else needs to be done when the function is done, such as cleaning up object variables. So that's it! 
Now let's go back to the form view and see what happens when we change the language for Windows. Right-click the Start icon and choose Control Panel. We want to change a region setting. Now it is set to English. Now it is French. Now it is Spanish. Now it is Norwegian. Now it is Italian. Notice that each time all I have to do is apply in Windows and immediately, without me having to do anything else, the list in Access is changed. In summary, to use a row source type custom function, put the function name in the property. No equal sign before, no parentheses after. We need these five parameters for the function. The control object, a variant for the unique ID, a long integer row number, a long integer column number, and an integer numeric code for the information type. You could use variant for the data types, as Wayne Phillips does. Then the function has case statements to process the information code and return the value that Access is looking for. This code is in the Calendar Maker tool, which you can download and use too. It makes calendars with any start day for the week and shows day and month names in the language set by Windows. You can also display information from your database on each day. The download link is in the video description. If you're struggling with a project and have some bucks to spend, let's connect and build it together. I have thousands of code snippets, lots of tools, and we can use them as they're needed. That can cut out lots of development time. I'm looking for work and will give you a great deal. Have I ever helped you? Please visit msaccessgurus.com and go to a code, tool, or video page. At the bottom, you'll find a donate button. I'm in a tight spot and your help would mean a lot, even if all you have to give is a little. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.